Hi, my name is Liang, and uh, currently I'm in the LinkedIn Red, uh, Field Relevance team. So this is a joint work with uh, several people in LinkedIn uh, engineering. So this is a, a study about uh, how can we do the recommendation at LinkedIn. So basically, uh, the recommendation is part of the LinkedIn products. For example, here is the LinkedIn uh, news feed and the LinkedIn email. So the goal is we try to deliver the relevant information to the LinkedIn members. But how can we decide what is relevant, what is not? So that's why we use the recommender system. And here is a typical uh, flow, how can we build the recommender system? Um, we connect the user feedback, and we know the ground truth of the relevance. And we use the machine learning model to train the model and deploy the model into the ranking system and show to the user, and then we connect the new feedback. So that's kind of a loop we build the recommender system. <clears throat> but right now, in most systems, people only use one feedback, such as click. And uh, as you know, in many, uh, in many um, for example, in LinkedIn uh, news feed, you can click this item. You can also like, comment, share, right? So if you don't like this item, you can even hide or dismiss this one. And for the email, it's the same. You can also unsubscribe the LinkedIn email. So that's very strong negative feedback. So how can we use multiple types of the feedback into a <coughs> single recommended system? So clearly, if you can use multiple type of feedback, it is better than just use one uh, feedback. The problem is how can we combine this type of feedback? And uh, this is an empirical study, so we didn't propose any new method. We just um, run some experiments offline and online and to show the results, to show what we found. And the goal, of course, we have positive user feedback. We also have negative user feedback. Uh, the goal is we try to maximize the, the user to pro provide positive feedback and uh, minimize the negative feedback in future, because that's in future, so we have to predict how likely the user will provide the positive feedback and the negative feedback. So we can do the recommendation based on our prediction. And uh, this is the first study we did on the LinkedIn feeds. So you can see as in, uh, in this screenshot. So you can, you can click this uh, news article. You can also like, comment, share, right? And if you click the uh, right top button, you can also hide this and unfollow this channel. And the first experiment, uh, we try to combine the viral action and the click. So the viral action is like, comment, share. And uh, so clearly the viral action is more important than click because the viral action can improve the liquidity of the social network. Can can help the ecosystem. And the second one is click and hide, because if you show some bad results, bad items to the user, so the user may hide this, hide this item, so that's, that's not good, right? We try to minimize the, the hide. And the second experiment we did is on LinkedIn email. So uh, we may send many emails to the user, but the user uh, may don't want to receive those emails. So they, they may unsubscribe or report this as a spam so we can receive the complaint. And the meanwhile, we also want to use it to click this email because the click is, is an indication of the user engagement. And we tried three different methods. And uh, uh, the three different methods actually are very simple. The first one is uh, um, we train the model individually. So, for example, we have the click feedback. We have the viral action feedback. We have the hide feedback, right? So we can train a model individually to predict how likely the user will click this item, how likely the user will like come share this item, or how likely the user will hide this item. Then we, we get a three probability, and we do some kind of a linear combination to get the combined score. Then we rank all the uh, feed updates uh, based on the combined score. So that's very simple. but. Uh, there's some problem for this method because we found the different types of the feedback that may have some correlation. For example, if you like this uh, article, you may also share this article, right? If you, if you hide this article, uh, which means you, you don't like it, so it's a negative correlated with the like. So there are some correlations between this feedback. So how can we use the correlation? If you train individually, you cannot use those correlation signal. 
And the second uh, method is a sequential train. So um, it's like the warm star. The intuition is like uh, we, we, we want to build a warm star model. So firstly, uh, we just train the click model and uh, we get the coefficient. And uh, then we bring this coefficient beta into the next training. And we use the beta as a pry to recognize the next training. And then sequentially, we can recognize, we can use previous training results to recognize next step training. So the final model will contain the signal of all the, uh, all the data. And the uh, third method we tried is, uh, is very simple, it's a joint train. So um, because for different signal, we can define different uh, loss function, and uh, we can, con we can uh, build a combined loss. And uh, then we just optimize this combined loss. Here is an example of the click and the hide. So um, if we want to predict uh, the click CTR, so we can use the logistic regression. So first we, build, uh, we put the logistic loss to fit the click data. But meanwhile, we want the hide item, the hide item should have a very low ranking score. So the hide item should be ranked very low. So we can put the hinge loss to force the hide item have a very low score. So that's why we put the second, second hinge loss. The final loss function is a linear combination of them. And you can choose the weight W1, W2. That's a trade off how you treat the, the, the two loss. So that's uh, uh, the third method we tried. And the first we did the offline experiments. So, so actually at LinkedIn, when we uh, develop a model, we first do is do offline experiments. The offline experiments is, uh, for, the, for the fees is because it's a ranking problem. So we, um, we connect the, uh, the, the, actually we, we use a very small subset of the traffic to random shuffle all the items. And then we can get the unbiased data, right? So then we, use, we run this simulation. This simulation is called replay on the unbiased data. And uh, to simulate, if we uh, run this model, the testing model, what would be the click rate? What would be the viral action rate? What would be the, uh, the hide rate? Um, the, so the, the experimental results, I think, is very uh, straightforward. So you, the, the last method, the third method, the constraint regression um, performs better than the, the, the two methods. I think because we tried the click and the viral action. As I mentioned, the, if you like something, you probably will click this one. And you, so they have a very strong correlation. So if you put them train together, you already do have a better performance. <clears throat> And uh, then we also tried the click and the hide. So the goal is different. We try to maximize the CTR, but minimize the hide rate. And the, for this result, so um, it looks like the constraint regression is almost similar as the first method. We train each model individually and combine the, 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 uh, the score. I think that that's because uh, the correlation between the click and the hide usually is not very strong. Um, from our experiments, we found some many users uh, hide the uh, feed update, not because they don't want to see. Uh, in many cases, because they just saw it. So they just hide it. They don't want to see again. <clears throat> and we also did the online experiments. So basically, for the uh, constraint regression, uh, after we train the model, and uh, we, can, mm, we can deploy this model online and run uh, this 2% of traffic uh, maybe for one week. And we can do the A-B testing. So for this bucket, we can compute uh, what, how many clicks per member in this week. And uh, we also have the control model. So the control model is we only optimize the CTR. So we can also observe how many clicks for those in this bucket in this week. And we can track also track the hide rate. And here are some, um, some results for the online experiments. We tried the three different methods. So the three different methods, three different uh, treatments, which means we have a three different uh, trade off between the click and the uh, height. <coughs> and here show some results. And uh, the result, result actually is very good. So basically, if we, 
we incorporate the high signal, which can also help you build a better CTR prediction model. And uh, the second experiment we did on the uh, LinkedIn email, so, um, so we want to send the email, we want the user to click this email, but we don't want the user to unsubscribe our email. So we have, to, uh, we have to measure what is the accuracy for the click response prediction, and also what's the accuracy for the complaint response prediction. <clears throat> and for this result, it's pretty much the same as the LinkedIn feeds. But the w one thing we did a very interesting uh, va variation for the experiment. So we limited the number of uh, complaints to 10. So we only limited the this thing, this data are very small, and uh, run this, this experiment again. So then we can see that the joint trend, the constraint regression can perform better than other methods. Um, as I mentioned, that's because uh, the, the, there's some ne negative correlation between the clique and the complaint. And uh, if we limit the, the, the uh, complaint data to 10, so you don't have enough data to build a good model to predict the complaint. And then if you combine the click data together, so they can achieve better performance. Okay, so that's the conclusion. So um, there, are some, some, there are two interesting results we found. So basically, if you have multiple feedback, and for each feedback, you have enough training data. For example, for the for the complaint, for the click, if, we, if for each feedback, we have a lot of training data. So you, you train the model individually or train jointly, that matter, so they have the same performance. But in some cases, one feedback has no enough training data. For example, you, uh, some, the height, usually you, you get a very small number of height. And, but you have a large amount of correlated data, such as click, and if you put them train together, use the joint training, so they can perform better than individual training. So that's it. Any question? Thanks, Leah. So we have uh, some good time for questions, so uh, feel free to go ahead. Sure. Do you want Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm just wondering, as a baseline, did you ever compare uh, these methods with just simply using a classifier, binary classifier, but upweighting the positive that are more interesting, the viral ones? Mm -hmm. So um, you mean the baseline, the how, or the model, how we build the model, right? Yeah, basically with the normal logistic regression. Yes, but logistic regression. The positives that are more interesting, like viral ones, mm -hmm. just give them a weight of two. Uh, or something like that. Oh, you mean put a larger weight uh, for the yeah. data. Right, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's also an option. So if you put a larger weight on the viral action data, it, it is equivalent to you put a larger weight on the, uh, on the loss function for the viral click data, right? So yeah. it, is, it is similar. It's a special case of your combined. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have a sense of like whether that would be comparable to your best methods? Um, I, think that's the, I think that's very similar to the uh, constraint regression. We combine the loss function. It's almost the same. Um, I know most of your experiment was concerned about the CTR, but did you also do any analysis of the training time for these models, probably specifically in the model combined case versus the mm -hmm. joint training case? Mm -hmm. uh, can you say again the what, what's the concern? Uh, essentially, I was thinking I wanted to get some insight into how long it took to train these um, these particular approaches. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, you are right. If you if we combine the model right for different trade off, uh, we just train two models and we can try different ways to combine them. Mm -hmm. But if we use a joint training, so for different trade off, we have to train again, right? So for each combination of the trade-off, we have to train a model. Yeah, that's a cost for the offline training. All right. It's more of just a clarification question. Um, what are you running the replay against? And did you say you completely randomized the results for a small yes. percentage? Yeah, uh, for the replay, I think uh, um, there are some purpose you can 
take a look at. It. So it's like uh, um, for the for the because because the random shuffle the results. There's no saving bias, right? And uh, you know the historical data. You know in the history the user clicked or not clicked or liked or not liked, right? And uh, you run your model. If your model have the same uh, same ranking list in the history, so then you can you can check whether the user click or not click. Then you can track, you, 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 you can capture this click or not capture this click. And this is the items that show up in the feed? Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Liang? OK, let's thank our speaker. And we can move on to the next talk. <laughs>